Okay, good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to today's uh, briefing, which will be very short. Um, I would start by providing you some key highlights of uh, what has transpired over the past week um, on issues related to what's happening in the northern part of the country. I'll start by um, the attacks on civilians in the Afar region. So reports have come in the past few days that TPLF attacked uh, civilians, including women and children, in uh, Galikoma Gabale, uh, uh, Gabale within the Afar region, um, at a health clinic and school that was being used to shelter internally displaced persons. Um, together with these attacks, stockpile of food that had been reserved for humanitarian assistance had also been uh, destroyed. And uh, relatedly, the Afar region has uh, declared three days of mourning that began yesterday and uh, will end tomorrow. Um, it is to be recalled in this regard that um, following the enactment of the unilateral uh, ceasefire, the terrorist group TPLF um, have been sending in human waves um, uh, civilians, civilian fighters into the Afar and Amhara regions attacking, killing, raping civilians um, looting and pillaging communities and have displaced uh, over 300,000 people. So those that were attacked were also part of these um, displaced. On the latest with regards to humanitarian activities in the northern part of the country, uh, we have also stated that as of yesterday, August 11th, 277 trucks of humanitarian assistance have entered the Tigray region. Uh, this is uh, an increase from the last update. There are more than 10 different international humanitarian organization and UN agencies that are active in assistance efforts uh, covering 79 waradas within the Tigray region, while the federal government uh, also continues to provide humanitarian assistance in 14 waradas in the western part through the Disaster Risk Management Commission. Um, displaced communities due to TPLF's aggression and belligerence in the Afar and Amhara regions that we've uh, witnessed over the past weeks um, also do need humanitarian assistance, although they are not getting enough attention uh, by the broader international community, which seems to be only focused um, on uh, one area of um, uh, the need for humanitarian assistance. <coughs> Nevertheless, the government is uh, working to cover this gap and is providing support of food and non-food items already uh, also with an agreement in the pipeline for the WFP to support um, existing and uh, additional IDPs with the necessary humanitarian assistance. With regards to the um, August 10th statement that was issued from this office, I would like to take a, a little bit of time to provide context to the statement and also correct some misinterpretations uh, related to the uh, statement that had been issued by the office. As the terrorist TPLF's uh, aggressions continue unabated in the Amhara region and the Afar region, the federal government and the people of Ethiopia in unison are being forced to employ all means to defend uh, their communities. So in this light, the August 10th statement that was issued is a national call to all Ethiopians in the country and abroad, um, and it pertains to saving a nation from the overt declaration by TPLF to disintegrate the country. So um, in the statement, the open call that was made in the direction that has been put in place is for the National Defense Forces, the Special Forces and Regional Militias um, have been instructed to halt this um, destructive efforts by the TPLF as they continue encroaching in communities within the Amhara and uh, Afar regions. A call has also been made to eligible Ethiopians to join the Defense Forces while others are being called upon to organize at every level and protect their cities, to protect their towns, to protect their com communities, villages, and neighborhoods. It requires a concerted effort in addition to the efforts that the federal government is employing within its security apparatus. Hence, this national call is being made for everybody to um, also safeguard their communities and engage in thwarting of uh, the attacks by the terrorist TPLF group. This call is also being made to members of uh, our large diaspora community um, that is present globally. And this call is being made uh, to them as well to continue um, exposing the terrorist organization for what it is, uh, for the behaviors that it has been showing in its uh, terrorist manifestations, and to mobilize all forms of support in maintaining the sovereignty and continuity um, of Ethiopia as a state. 
Um, despite the continued international media mischaracterization of the statement, um, alluding that this call is against the Tigray region or the Tigray forces, because there are no Tigray forces. There's the TPLF, which is a terrorist organization designated by the House of People's Representatives. So this um, uh, tendency to allude and make it seem as if uh, the national call is aimed at the people of the Tigray who are part of uh, the fabric of the Ethiopian uh, uh, social system um, is a misinterpretation. And I would like to reiterate that such a divisive narrative uh, formations, and particularly in such a sensitive period, um, point more to irresponsibility on the part of some actors, um, also point to the lack of nuance and understanding of context than it does of the intention and the spirit uh, with which the call was made. I wish to end uh, by pointing to the last line in the statement that was issued and emphasize again, open quote, the battle is not with Tigray, but with the terrorist forces that have found hiding in Tigray. Hence, we are battling to liberate the people of Tigray that are being used as an instrument by TPLF and the whole of Ethiopia from the terrorist group to maintain the peace and unity of our country. Our struggle is against the forces near and far which are behind the terrorist TPLF to dismantle our country and destroy Ethiopia's existence. Therefore, all patriots should stand with all their, heart, with, uh, should stand with all their hearts to protect their sovereignty today as in the past, with determination to defend the dignity and glory of their country. Close quote. I'll open it up to questions from you on current issues. Okay, welcome back, Coletta. So we we'll start from Coletta, we'll do Skander, Robi, and uh, Groom on the side. Thank you. Uh, uh, Belady, just uh, two, two, two issues. If you could kindly clarify on the national call. I mean, Ethiopia is known in the continent to have one of the strongest armies in the continent. And, uh, and uh, there's also, there's usually a talk that says it can easily mobilize in terms of emergency. Um, but we are having a national call to see eligible citizens to join the military. Is the military having a challenge in terms of numbers or strength? Uh, for us to have a call of, uh, for civilians to join. Then secondly, we've seen uh, OLF and TPLF saying they have an agreement. What is the government's uh, response to that? Thank you. Okay. Let me respond to Coletta's uh, question and I will continue. So the national call is not a call for lack of the military's ability, uh, the national defense forces to protect uh, the sovereignty of the country and to protect uh, citizens. The manner and the way that TPLF as a terrorist organization is engaging is by sending an influx of uh, civilians. Um, in that regard, civilians are, uh, are looting, they're destroying properties. I have uh, reports that are coming in from the Amhara region that in some communities they are also raping women and girls. So in that regard, it requires a concerted effort by all community members. So it's not only the national defense forces that can stop this influx um, that is being perpetrated by the TPLF, but it requires the concerted effort of all citizens within the country to thwart um, uh, the, the threat that is posed by TPLF. Mind you, they also do have agents that are working in other parts of the country. For the, so this, for this national call is also raising, um, uh, raising the alarm and raising the need for citizens to understand and be vigilant of their communities throughout the country uh, through which TPLF operatives uh, might be and um, have shown that they are also dealing as well. So this has nothing to do with the military's capacity. Nevertheless, the ongoing call for the uh, for eligible citizens to join the National Defense Forces is also part of uh, the efforts not only uh, with regards to um, assuaging the fears or uh, thwarting the threats of TPLF, but because the National Defense Forces are also uh, the first who are called on demand for other emergencies as well. Uh, we have uh, shared before that uh, particularly the Northern Command that was stationed in the northern part of the country in Tigray was working with farmers when the desert locust attacks were there. Um, during uh, COVID, any kind of uh, uh, support that was needed, the National Defense Forces was at the forefront supporting the people of Tigray as well. Um, during farming season, 
the national defense forces were there as well. So for any national emergencies, the national defense forces are obviously the first uh, go-to um, entity. So in that regard, onboarding more citizens is part of ensuring that the peace and security and stability um, is strengthened for the country, uh, regardless of whether these threats are coming from terrorists, foreign aggression, or also natural disasters. With regards to your second question in terms of the alliance between uh, Shani and uh, TPLF, um, this is not surprising for the federal government, uh, this alliance between two terrorist groups. Um, both groups have been uh, uh, designated as terrorists by the House of People's Representatives in early May. And while the timing of the public declaration needs an examination, the government has been indicating for over uh, two years now that the TPLF have been using Shane as errand runners for their destructive uh, mission. So this is not something new that comes uh, uh, to the go government or that is surprising. In yesterday's public declaration of this uh, unusual marriage between these two groups, uh, which they have acknowledged publicly, um, what they have also acknowledged is that they are um, working in unison, uh, leading towards destructive activities against the stability of the nation and that terrorism is a general feature of both. So uh, House of People's Representatives representing uh, millions of Ethiopians have already declared these two uh, groups as uh, terrorists. In addition to that, this public declaration, which has already been uh, uh, stated by the government long ago, has uh, become much more uh, public and an acknowledgement. Um, so while the government has been saying this for, for a while now, um, the international media seems to only believe it when it comes out of uh, the terrorist groups uh, <laughs> or from the horse's mouth. So now they have told the entire world. And important to point out in this regard is no group can claim to be for the people of Oromia while it is using or it is killing um, uh, p the people of the region for its individual political gains. And no entity can also claim to be for the people of Tigray where it's also killing its own people and holding them hostage for its own uh, political gains. Let's not uh, also forget that uh, TPLF tortured, killed, uh, displaced, and uh, disappeared many Oromo youth brandishing them as part of uh, the Shani uh, organization. So uh, I, I, I don't believe that the uh, uh, youth of Oromia region um, are in alignment with this as well because this is an alignment of two uh, terrorist organizations. And with regards to Shani's declaration, we have no doubt that the mature voices and um, the early founders of the Oromo Liberation Front will also denounce this uh, destructive alliance. Uh, to the August uh, 10 statement, uh, does the statement mean that the unilateral ceasefire has been lifted? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the statement, Iskander, uh, it means that the government and the people of Ethiopia together will employ all means necessary to prevent the terrorist TPLF from spiraling the country into further instability. That's what it means in a nutshell. Ravi. Thank you for the briefing. Um, I wanted to follow up on Coletta's question and just ask if you could give us an update on how counterinsurgency efforts are going in Oromia and what is the federal government's assessment of the threat that OLF Shane poses um, in light of its stated goal of coming to Addis. Um, and secondly, I wanted to ask about reports that Ethiopia has purchased or acquired UCAVs or drones. Do you have any information about that? Uh, where have those come from? If they have been acquired, um, and have they come from Iran? And if not, is purchasing drones from Iran something that the federal government would consider? Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. That's uh, quite a wild allegation to include or insert Iran in that. Um, nevertheless, um, uh, with regards to purchase of such equipment, this would be at the military um, or the National Defense Forces uh, discretion. I don't have any information related to that. Um, on counterinsurgency um, efforts with the, uh, within the Oromia region, these uh, efforts have been ongoing and they will be ongoing. Um, if there is any particular update that needs to be shared, uh, the Oromia region as the first call would provide that update. Groom. Thank you so much. I have two questions as well. Um, the first one, despite the fact that the government has declared uh, the uni unilateral ceasefire, uh, which uh, TPLF put a precondition to accept, uh, the international community continued pressuring Ethiopia. What is really the government doing to quell such a pressure? And uh, what kind of diplomatic efforts in terms of strategy is the government uh, following at the moment? Uh, the second one, 
unverified reports are coming out saying that uh, some Sudanese soldiers, at least in uniform, um, have been um, captured by Ethiopian forces from um, the border side coming alongside the TPLF force. Is, can this be verified? And is there, um, can the government claim that Sudanese forces are now uh, supporting one way or another uh, uh, TPLF's uh, perhaps uh, attacks or, or uh, missions? Thank you. Thank you, Guru. Um, on the continued pressure that is being exerted by the international community on Ethiopia, um, we have pointed out on several locations and uh, as part of ongoing discussions um, and engagements that uh, the diplomatic um, community on the Ethiopian side is engaging with counterparts, it is being made clear that there is an unfair um, uh, leaning towards uh, hearing more of the TPLF's uh, uh, propaganda and um, uh, assessment of the situation rather than the miles that the federal government uh, has gone. Um, I do believe that there is some progress in that regard and particularly following the, you know, the unilateral uh, ceasefire being enacted by the federal government and the perpetration that the TPLF has been uh, taking since then um, has been exposing the belligerents, has been exposing um, uh, their interest, which is beyond uh, humanitarian relief for the people of Tigray, uh, that it is a concentrated desire uh, for uh, you know, bringing or coming back uh, to power. So there is that um, continued clarity that is uh, emerging. And um, again, this is an opportunity to really be able, as I had mentioned the last time, to be able to differentiate um, between the wheat and the chaff because there is so much misinformation that is being uh, pushed by the TPLF narrative. Um, again, the dilly-dallying between victor and victim whenever it suits them and appealing to uh, international principles and values um, that they are not uh, you know, privy to being held accountable. So there is still a gap in terms of the international community holding um, TPLF accountable calling a spade a spade because there is still shying in terms of calling them a terrorist organization which uh, various partners are also um, uh, have been reminded of as well there is also a shying away from uh, denouncing the various atrocities that they are committing um, and this needs to also be magnified and part of uh, magnifying that these atrocities that they're committing is the responsibility of the media um, that is also here thank you Groom. Any other questions? Okay, no way. And over here, no, we'll take that last one. Is that gone? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I have only one question. My question is regarding the three NGOs that were suspended due to uh, violating the rules of the country. Uh, are there any updates uh, regarding the three NGOs? Uh, if there are maybe talks uh, going on between the government and the NGOs, and does the government have any plan to lift the suspension before uh, the end of the three months timeline? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Abtabo. Okay, because you're wearing a mask. Um, uh, I have noted that uh, the Ministry of Peace has had uh, conversations um, and in fact, earlier today or yesterday, a civil society forum was also um, had been convened by the uh, the relevant or, uh, the relevant uh, stakeholder from the federal side uh, to talk about some of these issues. Um, so, in that regard, with regards to the lifting of the suspension, this is going to be at the discretion of these organizations, and in due time, they would also make that uh, available. Noe. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Uh, my question is related with the latest uh, report by Amnesty International. Uh, we know that the government and uh, other entities are uh, conducting investigation into the issue. Uh, what is your assessment about uh, this early report of the, um, by Amnesty International? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs had issued a lengthy statement on that particular issue after Amnesty International released their report yesterday, so I'm not going to go into the details of it. Nevertheless, um, I want to take this opportunity to emphasize that the government of Ethiopia condemns sexual violence, has a zero tolerance policy, and um, has in previous briefings, and in fact, um, this briefing has also issued statements with regards to the, uh, the procedures that had been put in place 
to hold into account um, uh, soldiers that had violated the code of conduct. So this has been done about two or three months ago, and a criminal court had also um, apprehended and was trying uh, soldiers um, that had been found responsible for that. So against this backdrop, it was quite um, interesting that uh, Amnesty International would uh, bring uh, this issue up again because it's also under investigation, particularly the UN Office of the, uh, of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission had also embarked uh, some months back in terms of um, uh, investigating allegations within the region of um, human rights violations as well as uh, sexual violence. So while this investigation is uh, ongoing, the Amnesty International um, recommendations, which deviate from a process that has already been started, is questionable. Uh, secondly, um, the methodology that they have also utilized is quite questionable because these are remote um, investigations and a very s a small number, um, and also relying very heavily on what they consider community workers, quote unquote. So uh, the federal government holds a position that um, uh, that's a botched methodology, particularly uh, when the UN Office of the Higher Commission is on the ground, uh, had been given access, and is in the middle of these investigations. So the timeline or the timing of this uh, release is uh, questionable in that regard. Okay, last question from Noe. Thank you for the briefing. Uh, there's been a, a call to join the army by Amhara uh, region, by Addis Abeba, and now. Uh, the federal government, uh, do we have an idea of how many people actually join? Um, no, this is a national call, um, not only to join the National Defense Forces, not only to join the Special Forces and the militia, but as I had said, this is a call for all Ethiopians to safeguard their communities. So that means we're looking at in the millions that people are taking this call. In particular, if you're looking at numbers of how many have joined, again, this is part of uh, at the discretion of each of these institutions and um, uh, the regions. Uh, if they do decide that it's relevant to be able to expose the numbers, um, and if they've done their count, they will do so in, the, uh, in uh, due time. But uh, the general perspective that I want to share with you for that particular question is a national call means everybody is on guard and everybody is ready to thwart off um, the, the threats and uh, the terrorist activities that uh, TPLF and its operatives are, um, are putting in place uh, for the disintegration of Ethiopia, which will be thwarted by the National Defense Forces as well as the community uh, that is being uh, put together. If there are no other questions, I will end on this note. Okay, thank you.